What is up? What is up? Who? Yeah, but we got our new camera on now when I'm swinging. All right. Oh, I'm talking to you. What's going on, guys? Man, who all we got here? We got Thomas. What's up? What's up, man? Family's okay. Um, we got one of the nurses here uh, in that car there. She just pulled up to do a uh, bandage for uh, Danielle. Um, what's up, Mike? Legion? Robert? Better yard service? What's up? That would be uh, Jimmy. Uh, all right. So... Uh, Danielle's doing okay. She got home a couple days ago. Then yesterday went to the doctor's office, back to MD to see a uh, stem cell doctor. Talk about the upcoming treatment. He's got to get with her chemo doctor, cancer doctor. They got to come through with each other on what the, the battle plan is. Because that's what it is. It's a battle. So, all right. We don't have a ton of properties to do today. I got about five or six. So, I got some time to shoot the breeze with you guys. Uh, all right, so uh, what we got going on today, we're doing some installs. I already installed uh, one of these right here a couple days ago. Uh, and it's to, to anchor down the, um, uh, the zero turn mower. And then I have another idea for the walk behind board, anchor it down too. We're going to do that today as well. Uh, I may not do it in this video, but what we're going to do with the zero turn we're going to do in this video. All right, so let's show you here, guys, real quick. All right, so we've already installed one wheel. Uh, we got one there and then one in the front on the other side. So in my opinion, you don't want to do just one side. I know it may be a little loud in here because of the fan. I'm sorry, I'm hot. It's hotter than a hemorrhoid next to a raging butthole. That's how hot it is right now. It's sweaty and nasty. So, um, you want to anchor both big wheels down because when you anchor just one wheel down, that machine is going to pivot that way. You know, it has the tendency to. Now you can strap it down real tight on that tire and it may not go nowhere, but it, it still has a tendency. So if you can do both wheels, that's even better. So uh, we got this system uh, from Home Depot. You know, they carry the Husky brand. And the main reason I got it, I think it's, I think it's only, it's either 30 bucks or 20 bucks, I don't remember. But it's got these right here, there's two of them, and they're flat, you see that? So some things, of course you can always put a four down there, you can do that, and then, and then figure out your strap thing. The two by four just kind of chucks the wheels, keeps it right there. This little jewel here, compared to like Green Touch, their tire strap down system, which is pretty cool, but you got that hump you gotta drive. Not a big fan of that. Not a big fan of humps, you know what I mean? So I like this because it's flat. And you don't have to worry about bending it in because see these little guys right here? Right there? That's level with this edge right here. So you don't have to worry about it pushing down inwards. So I like that. Sometimes it's a little tricky to, to feel you go over this to where you're in between this one and the other one, but you can feel. It's a little subtle, but you just look over your tires and you'll tell. So we got one installed. We're going to do this other one. We're going to pull up the small tripod uh, up on the trailer. You got, you got a, there's a couple ways you can do it. I prefer to use bolts to go through the, the plywood floor to bolt it down. That's really the best way. But I don't want to spend a lot of time drilling holes, doing the bolts. Plus, when you drop the bolts down in, you need one person on top, you know, one person on bottom. Generally how it works. But uh, I don't have that. So instead... We're going to use some wood deck screws. Not the most ideal thing. What's up, Airborne? 
not the most ideal thing. 38 degrees. Man, I remember being at the 101st, my man, and in the wintertime, 12 degrees outside, and the battalion commander still have us run in summer PT. I'm like, dude, are you fucking crazy? Don't answer that, sir. So, um, but yeah, I missed that. What's up, Airborne? Hope you're doing well. What's up, Scott? What is up, man? I can't wait to see the video that um, Walker is going to have. Hopefully, you can be in it. You know, use they use part of that footage that they got. I think they will. Uh, Scott Walker, I don't know if you saw my video yesterday. Alan Metzger uh, reached out to me yesterday, and we were talking and said, hey, man, they literally just came out with this kit system for the B models. I'm sure they'll come out with other models as well. It will allow you to mold five inches, which is good. Uh, so basically, you're getting new casters in the front using the same wheels. So the casters will be longer. You're getting taller tractor wheels, the big ones, and then you're getting taller casters for the back part uh, of that B model. And uh, so that's going to be roughly $500, I think, kind of depending where you're going, uh, what the uh, dealer and stuff, and what part of the country. But I think roughly it's going to be about 500 bucks. Uh, let's see here. Good idea to do it on the diagonal, keep it in the place. That's right. Uh, it's like seven degrees here today, just finishing. That's crazy, Scott. It seemed like just a month ago it was, you know, still, you know, uh, maybe towards the end of summer temperature. You guys are already getting snow, leaves falling. It's still 90s here. That just blows my mind. So what we're going to do to anchor these guys right here with is we're just going to use wood screws. Okay, these are uh, these are uh, an inch and five eighths, so almost two inches. So the boards that are on here, they're two by whatever, you know. So these are going to go basically almost the entire width of the board, the diameter of the board. And we're going to use a washer. A washer. The washers, you're just going to slide your screw through, okay? And you put it on here. And the reason we want to do that is because we know uh, it's going to want to sink inside there a little bit. And with this type of head, you know, with that that dome piece right there, see, and it's going to go right in there. I don't with that pressure of anchoring it down. I don't want it to sink in, so that's why we're going to use that flat washer. You know, nothing major. We're not putting like high torque on this guy or anything, and it's just going to look something like that. Okay, nothing fancy. Uh, you don't need a lock washer because these screws. But uh, and then maybe in the winter time, I may go back and add the bolts. That's probably what I'll do. But to keep things kind of quick and easy and still be able to secure your, your stuff, I'm just going to use these wood screws. It'll be fine. You know, it's not like, you know, we're going, you know, 10,000 miles and traveling across the country. Not that that would even be a big deal either. Uh, but, you know, we don't travel far. A few miles from the house, you know, we're pretty safe driving. So these will do just fine, you know. The main thing is to keep stuff secure load. Because you don't want to be held responsible. Well, you are responsible regardless. But if you could secure these heavy equipment, and if you're in a wreck, and it prevents it from going, you know, way over and hitting somebody, maybe it only tumbles over and gets jacked up within the trailer because of those straps. That would be good, you know. So you just want to think safety and stuff. And I mean, I have never heard of a story of somebody in a wreck and a mower goes flying over there and kills somebody checking checking the mail at the mailbox. You know what I'm saying? I've never heard of any of that so uh okay uh what's up barnes way to job and got a new truck oh that's cool man that's awesome barnes well we definitely want to check the truck out did you get it decaled out as well let us know man all right so on to the nitty gritty you need to get some washers first uh, you know I've, I've been out for a while you know uh taking care of you know the kids and mama and stuff you know we're almost getting kind of normal not normal Normal, but you know, normal as far as being able to spend some time on on the uh, the old tube there. <clears throat> We've been recording a little bit this week. Uh, just hadn't had a chance to do any editing. I got new software coming today, so uh, I was wanting to put up. I was wanting to put up a video this morning that I shot over the last two days. Just didn't have time to do editing. Well, I didn't have the, the software anyway, so uh, so. I've still got to do my Sunday shout out 
and uh, still working on that. Uh, Jim with or is it Jim? No, Jim Scott. No, Jim Scott. Scott. Oh, no, Jim. Shit. I think his name is Jim. I don't know. Anyways, so Scott Long here. Uh, his, you know, his he's next in line to do a shout out Sunday. So I should be able to do that this Sunday. And then uh, I did get from Jim uh, uh, a letter and uh, read that a uh, really nice letter by the way and he sent one of his decals so i'll show that in a, a shout out video read that stuff so i appreciate that all right so we need 16 of these washers no we need eight uh, one on there two three four five six six seven eight actually throw the out All right, so here's the other thing you're going to want to need, too. On your straps, your straps are going to come where they are 15 feet long. This part right here. You don't need 15 feet long, right? Okay. Take the camera off. Fly over here. Okay. So you don't need this to be 15 feet long for what we're doing. So what I did here is I put the, the, the mower in place. You know, your little buckle here. All right, that goes in there. So what you're going to do is... You have this guy in place, okay? So you're gonna put the buckle in first here, lift that up, and then down in, and then it's there. See that? Top view. And then when you wanna pull it out, lift it up, slide, and out. So if you try to do it the other way, you can. You can do it that way too, it doesn't matter, I guess. But just for me, it's just easier. Oh yeah, see, if you try to do it that way, it won't work. That's what I meant to say, sorry. You have to do it with this part going in first and then slide out. You know, I wish there was a little less slack in the buckle part, but that's okay. I think it's for 20 or 30 bucks. I can't remember which is a pretty good deal. All right. So once you have this guy in place, okay, then you take this around your tire, okay? So you're going over your tire and you got two sections here. So when you place this up to the tire like this and you're screwing it down, you know, you might not be able to reach this one, but you can reach this one, you know. Uh, anyway, so once you go over your tire, once this guy goes over your tire, okay, uh, and you get it anchored down into the bucket part, all right, you pull it through, you get it tight, all right. You figure out how much you don't need, which there is a lot of excess. So once you cut that off, you can either take a match, a lighter, or for a lighter. I use my little but butane lighter. And I lift the edge here and uh, melted that back down, put it on a zip tie, and put it back into the uh, uh, toolbox because you may need this one day. You're like, well, how are you going to use it? We're going to cut it. Okay. There's a lot of things you can do with this. This is some good webbing. This actually holds, uh, I believe it's uh, thir uh, 1,300 pounds. Thir yeah, 1,333 pounds. Yeah, I think it's like 1,333 pounds or something like that, which is good. So what you could do is, uh, you know, you could put bolts in here, you know, uh, and, there's, and then melt, the, like you create your circle, melt that, and then you can put a washer, washer, the bolt through, bolt it down on something. Now you got another strap. You know, you can tie, you can do whatever. This, you could do uh, clamps, you know, clamp it down real tight, all kinds of stuff. Already done, huh? Take care. So, uh, there's a lot of uses for that, so don't throw it away. That bandage change is supposed to take 30 minutes. She in and out, too. Ugh. Anyways. So, so we're going to show you guys those steps. And, uh, I think we're ready to start it. Okay, so, let's get our, uh, washers here. Let's get our, we got put on there. We got a magnet. A magnet for our uh, our action camera to go on our mower. We're not messing with that. We're gonna do some more mowing today. I may even do live mowing with you guys. The battery life on this phone is stupid, ridiculous good. Plus, I can buy the the uh, it had some that's a Z4 Motorola Z4. So you can do mods, so I can add on an, an additional external battery for like eight hours of continuous use. So that's pretty good. All right, so we need eight screws. Uh, three, we got one, two, three, four. All right. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to need this. You're going to need a pencil. 
pencil or something to mark in these little holes. Right there. So let's go ahead and set that up. Let's get you guys on a smaller tripod. Hang tight with me. Hang tight. We're just going to use a little six inch tripod here. You guys can be on the down there on the deck. All right. Okay, hopefully it's strong enough to hold the phone up. Should be, anyways. Take one. I've got to get this other one out. Okay. Turn this around. Okay, so you want to line it up. I already got the mower kind of in place where I want it, right? I just want to kind of in front of this other one here. So you want to place that in the center of that tire. You don't want to shove it underneath there. You can even back it out a little bit if you want. You obviously won't be able to use that bottom one. Uh, so you can either, like on that one on that other side, I have it right up just like this. And in the front, I have it backed out like about an inch. Then I can reach it. You know, So that'll be okay. Whatever you want to do. I'm just going to do the same as I did on the other one. Just like that. You got it right. Make sure the center of your guy here okay. is in the center of this tread. You don't need to mark all four. You just need to mark one diagonally from the other. Center of that hole, okay? So let me go get the... Um, uh, all right, so we're going to go in the front and mark it as well. And then we'll move the mower. We'll probably go forward or backward, whatever. Then we'll drill our screws and we're done. Pretty quick and easy. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh. All right, guys. See, like, if we went all the way up, and that's in the center, okay? We want to back it out a little bit because you want to have... Now, if you don't want to use that one, that's fine. You don't have to. You can. We, we can leave it where it's at, and right here would be perfectly fine. But I want to pull it forward just a little bit because that's just what I'm going to do. Because I'm thinking with that walker, I don't know if it's going to be taller tires. I may need that extra room. But you can always move it forward anyways and re-screw stuff in place. All right, so we're, we're where we need to be. So we mark this little fella right here. Okay, there's one. Uh -oh. All right, let's see. Now we'll put, drop our screws and we're done. And we'll buckle this baby down. <clears throat> All right, let's put you back on the big tripod. Whew. Hold on. I need to get another one of these these guys right here for the phone. This one right here. That way I don't have to keep doing that. I can just put it on one and that's it. It's ready. All right. See, we got some questions coming in. Let's see if we can get those real quick. Uh, it's like, okay, right on. Uh -huh. What's up, Mark? Man, how are you, bro? Asheree. Yes, I am doing so. My HOA forbids commercial vehicles being parked at the residence, so I cannot add decals yet. Got to stay undercover for now. I do plan on turning in into a rolling business card into the future. Yeah, HOA is such jackasses because every neighborhood's different. You could just park it in your garage if you got one. Uh, see, uh, he's installing that deal that Ben from Acme and Lawn Care has installed. No, it's different, Ashery. They paid sixty dollars per wheel for theirs. I only paid thirty plus. There's a difference. Um, mine doesn't have a big peak like this. Mine is flat, so there's a big difference there. I'm not spending, you know, green touch industry prices for something I could do for half the price. And uh, because here's the thing, guys, the floors on trailers can be trip hazards if you're not careful. And that big thing, the green touch industry, where it peaks up like that, that's a major ass trip hazard. You will bust your ass on your trailer. You go doing that right there, you know. Uh, it's just, it's, I don't like that. So, uh, I, that's one thing, one reason why I didn't want, that's number one reason why I didn't want to buy the one from Green Touch and to the price, $60 for one tire. No, thank you. you know, someone's, someone's making money and someone's getting screwed. Uh, time to work. I'll catch you later. Uh, you got it, Barnes. Uh, that's stupid Barnes. I hope people support it. Uh, I'm going to watch this live stream again tonight. I'm now needing to do faster straps. Yeah. Now it's now Barnes. It's not super duper fast. 
the one of green touch probably is a little bit quicker, but here's the thing. People getting so spoiled with, oh, I need it to be, I need to be able to do it in two seconds instead of five seconds. Be fucking serious. You know, people are like that. It's like, you should be medicated. <laughs> but, um, you know, those few seconds are not going to make a difference. So, uh, what you look for when you're buying things, accessories, is practicality, uh, or functionality, sorry, functionality, practicality, it's practical, because it'd be practical, it's still functional, or non-functional, and price, you know, and then uh, how long it's going to last, longevity, you know? Uh, all right, glad you're enjoying it. Uh, uh, right, neighbor just came out of uh -huh. So women like busted asses, but that's another story for another time. That's right. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this out of our package here. Oh, here we go. I wonder if that worked. All right. Go look at a tractor tonight, an actual tractor. It's a 1963 Ford 2000. Maybe uh, cutting this commercial property four and a half acres every three months. I don't want to put my mower on that. Do it for about 500 bucks every time. Okay, so. Take these right here off. We don't need these little guys. Although it might tell you, don't take it off. But hey, when do we ever listen to instructions? All right. So, oh, so I'm already going since I already cut the other one. Well, I'm going to show you. Yeah, how I do it. I'm not just going to cut it. Let's say if I wanted to. I could just go ahead and measure this one out to this one here and go ahead and cut it. But, you know, I wanted you guys to see how I did that. The only commercial right straps are expensive. You can get residential rights first. Yeah, I know. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of ratchet straps and buckle straps and stuff like that. One yard, 55 miles. Holy schmoly, Peter. That's a long ways away, bro. I appreciate you watching, Peter. You have a good day, bro. Want to attach ratchet. Don't need speed straps. Okay. Then Barnes, this is a good one. Are there other ones like it? Absolutely there are. You know, uh, you could order all kinds of stuff online, on Amazon, have it shipped to you for free. You don't like it, send it back, no, no charge for shipping. You, know, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, there's all kinds. But I like these, these are pretty good. They're inexpensive and they look like they're gonna hold up. So uh, let's go ahead and take our drill. Uh, we're gonna need to install these real quick. I can move that mower. Uh, this here. Alright, so let me move this mower real quick, guys. I think the keys are in it. You guys, up here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're just going to find our pencil marks. Yeah, 
screw gets right there in that center, right on your pencil mark. There we go. Now, again, you know, I told you guys that bolts are really the better thing to use, but I don't have a lot of time. So these right here will do just fine. All right, let's go get our strap, put our mower back on, then we cut our strap. I'll tell you what, let's do this. You guys can see what's going on here. going to do now attach our strap <clears throat> You know, you can go into the front probably just fine. Uh, that's why there's two. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so we got that. Make sure your strap is nice and flat. We're going to go ahead and put our turnbuckle. So, just so you don't get confused, don't put it on like this. Straighten it out and then have it bent like that. And then you need to turn it around. Uh, oh, yeah, it's this way. So it's going to go on here. Yeah, because when you tighten it, you're going like this. Okay? So make sure that it folds towards you. All right. Done. Take this part right here. Have that opening facing down. Where 
going to measure to cut all the egg off. The eggs are soft, and we don't need So you don't need jacking this every time. All right. Okay. So once you do that, go ahead and crank it down. Wonder, you know, how much do I need to crank it? You want to crank it where you see the tires bow out just a little bit. There you go. That way you know you got sufficient pressure on it. Then you go and cut this off. So you know we probably don't need more than maybe I'd come up maybe six inches right in there. You know, maybe you get rid of the mower, you get another one that's got taller tires, you got a little bit of room. You know, well you could always use it for something else. So I'm just gonna come up about six inches and then call it good. Cut straight across, shit that in the top. <laughs> okay. Take your, your lighter. Cut across, right side. Done. And it's singed, it's not going to come undone. Then you can do this one as well. They real easy. Just like a professional. We're all done. It's strapped in. So the install is pretty easy. You know, once you get it marked in place and you know whatever it is you're gonna get that over there. Get set up. Whew. Sweat my tail off. Man. Go buckle the other one so you can guys see what it looks like with both of both of them on there. Now, depending on your trailer, now if you have a wider trailer and you don't have walls, of course it'll be easier to get to. So keep that in mind. Just because it may take me a few seconds to get over the tire, get it buckled in, or whatever. What you could always do is already have the front strapped in. See, and I didn't do that, but going forward, you know, you undo the back, roll it out of the way, then when you, you can leave these in the front, you just pull them over. wheels go where it stops. Now I don't have to spend the extra time, so I stop right there, maybe a little one buys or something. Chris. 
scared now. So they didn't take that long. You know, it's still new to me. So I don't quite have the system down right, you know, just so quick and fast and like I've been doing it a thousand times. But we'll get there. So let's take a walk around, look at it. All right, so we got them both anchored in the back. And uh, should be good. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Because sometimes, you know, when you don't strap that stuff down, you know, it wants to just bounce around. And, you know, because it bounced around, look at all these rub marks. I got a bunch of them. Brand new machine, not even a week old, and looks like I've had it a while. That's all from the trailer, you know, not being secured down. And But we got it now. Okay. We got some questions here. Uh, my toe straps, yeah. Yeah, they are. They're um, two inch. Yeah, two inch. Includes two inch and four inch E tracks. Yeah. yeah. Now, what, here we go. Working load 1,133 pounds. Dude, that's a boatload. Boatload of working rate. Wait. What's up, Avenger Knight? Yeah, I hadn't got that done yet. We know by now. Well, no, Ashery, you would not have been done by now. And you wouldn't have been able to put the bolts in because you need two people. One person to hold the top and one person underneath. Uh, you were just hate, uh, hating on a walker. I wasn't, you know, you're not understanding here, uh, Ashery. I'm praising Walker. Let's go and get on down and then gritty and talk some real shit here before you misinterpret what I said. Okay, I'm praising Walker for the fact that they create change. Understand? Yeah? Creating change to make something better. Okay, that's what I was praising. Okay, do I hate Walker? I never said I hate Walker. Well, I might have said I might have said that. I don't remember. Sometimes I say things. I don't remember. But you know, those two issues is getting the deck off was not an issue. I never said I couldn't get the deck off. Okay, the first time on the forty-eight, I couldn't get the deck off at all because I didn't undo the clip, uh, the clip from the PTO on the tractor to the shaft. Once I figured out how to do that, it slid right off. So on the thirty-six, getting the deck off was not a problem. That was easy. It was getting the sleeve off of the spline gear. That's what I couldn't get done. That's because it got damaged. So that's something still needs to be, you know, uh, corrected. Uh, but as far as the cutting height, okay, well, they're willing to make adjustments and changes. Well, okay, well, I like that. Why would I not like that? Why would I not say, hey, I'm glad you made that change. That's a good idea. That's no different than... You know, me working with another landscape company or me working with a customer, they have, they're doing this, 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 and shit keeps, you know, not doing right. But man, you really need changes so you can, you know, do this, you can do this better. And then when it happens, you're like, hey, did a good job, you know, nice change. So I'm not an unpractical kind of guy. I'm not a dickhead. So when I ask me that's willing to make a change because, you know, yeah, my, uh, my Wi-Fi went out or something. Hold on. So when a company makes change for the better, why shouldn't I say great job? So I did. Everything else about the machine I like. I like the fact that you can do a lot of things with one machine. You know? So and that the height is what was affecting the cut quality for, for, I really need to shave my head, for what I'm cutting. The height was the problem. So... The PTO thing, that's a different subject. Uh, all right, well, I guess uh, if Walker fixed the sleeve, it would work, but but I saw how pissed you were, and I understood why, because the sleeve is damaged. Yeah, well, I could buy a new sleeve. Okay, that's fine, I don't care. And it may still come off, I have no idea. So I'll spend two, 250 for another one. I don't care, it doesn't matter to me one bit. As long as, you know, they're like, hey, let's fix this problem. If they're willing to do that, I'm willing to keep trying, because, you know, I think it'd be good if we could adjust those couple of things. You know what I mean? Uh, I was five acres of yards, 50 inch deck will be a big help. Yeah. 
50 inch would be big. So this tractor I'm going to go see, it's got a four foot brush hog, uh, which four feet wide would be equivalent to like 42 inch, you know. But it's 27 or 30 horse or something like that. So it's strong enough to have a six foot brush hog. So that would be something that I would purchase down the road, a six foot brush hog to mow, you know, these acre properties. Uh, this commercial, it's pasture, you, know, mow pasture. you don't want to put a mower out there. Uh, respect your knowledge of the mowers you have, brother. Uh, had, you mean half. <laughs> Very helpful. You bet, Johnny. Uh, I just use the two by four screws. It works just fine. Yes, Thomas, you can. Absolutely. Uh, those do work good. As long as the mower works good for you, that's a nice. That's right, Ashery, which is why I wasn't screwing around when I bought a new trimmer and chose to go with Honda. I don't got time for silly MTD BS. Yeah, M M M T MTD is some BS. You're right about that. I got a big 50 inch toy belt rider, give it to me and the other day. You need me, babe? Yeah, but I was about to get off. What do you need? Okay. All right. So she's going to need me, and we've been on here 42 minutes and five seconds, but hey, no one's counting. Hey, ratchet strap, I've always redo them because I forget which way they go. <laughs> well, um, it's once you get, yeah, ratchet straps generally I don't care for. I like the big, bulky ones. Because it's not, you know, you can't mistake which way they go. You know, uh, remember, if you're cranking down overhand, it folds towards you. If you're cranking underhand, it folds away from you. There's an easy way to think about that. Thank you, Britt. Texas sweated like a pig in heat. No, Ashley, I'm sweating like a hemorrhoid next to a raging butthole. It's hotter than hell, man. Uh... I don't think MTD makes Cub Cadet. I think Cub Cadet makes Cub Cadet. Uh, they've been making Cub Cadet tractors since like early 1900s. Uh, I may be wrong. Don't quote me on that shit. You know, I don't. I don't really. I don't keep up with all that bullshit. Uh, that's the Cubs, a new one. Yeah, yeah. It appears to be a Cub Cadet mower he owns that we've rarely seen action on it. Hey, I got some footage yesterday. And uh, mowing an acre property. We'll get some footage today. I got to go mow a fairly big one. We'll run live on this mofo so you guys can see. Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate that. Howdy, howdy. I know, Asher. It's hard to figure me out. All right, guys. Let me get off so I can go help Danielle. And then the, here's what we're going to do. Here's my thought process for the put the walk behind mower. The walk behind mower. Let me turn you around. Ready? Here we go. The walk behind mower goes right up here, okay? And this guy fits off to the right of it. So <clears throat> what we're gonna be doing is the front part of the walk behind mower, you have those two right there, right? I'm gonna get a bar that goes from there straight across to the other side. All right, here's what we're gonna do. You're probably like, dude, what are you gonna do with that? I'm gonna tell you. All right, check it out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some components, which I'm about to show you. There's a cross beam that goes from right here straight across. We're going to bolt into that with an eye bolt. So, eye bolt and our other equipment right here. So here's our eye bolt, okay? So we're going to bolt into that, and then once we get it where we want, we're going to cut it off. Okay, you don't need the whole thing. All right, what are you going to do from that point? From that point, you're going to take this big old guy right here. This spring, this is spring loaded. Now this has, uh, uh, 325 pounds uh, of workload. That's a lot. This is heavy duty, okay? Heavy duty. So, all right, here's what we're going to do. Then, take this D-ring. This D-ring has a workload of 660 pounds, all right? Let me kind of give you guys a brief overview here. We'll do this install another day with you, all right? So, we're going to take this. All right, then we're going to take some chain. Once we measure how much chain we need, I'm thinking maybe like a foot, foot and a half. We're going to connect that chain to here, okay? All right. So you got this here. You got your eye bolt. We're just going to go right in here. We'll open up this right here just enough to take this to slide that in, okay? So this is connected to that cross beam up there, and it's going to be like this. And then we're going to take that chain. Once that chain is connected to here, we're going to connect to this D-ring. This D-ring has a workload 
of 250 pounds. These ain't no pumps, okay? We're gonna hook it up. Now, we're gonna take this D-ring and we are going to bolt on on that bar I was telling you about. It's gonna be on, on that lower. We're gonna bolt this right here on and this right here on. So it's gonna look just like this, facing you. This D-ring, so this is the mower, it's gonna come up here. Oh, I can't do two things at once. You gotta see me walk with you down. Let's connect right here. Okay, you probably wondering, well, what good is that gonna do? This guy right here is spring-loaded. Remember, it's a lot of weight. So we're gonna have it short enough to where you gotta pull it, and then it hooks on, or hooks on. We're gonna have to pull it, okay? Coming from the spring assembly here, Got here, got to pull it, and it's on, and it's tight. It remains tight. This will remain tight, no slack. What is that going to do? That's gonna keep that mower hugged up against the front part of that mower, or front part of that, uh, that uh, part right there, both wheels touching, okay? And it's gonna keep it up there. You don't have to worry about it bouncing around and strapping this down, that down, all that bullshit. It's secured to the front. That joker's not going anywhere. So we will do that install another day. I know, it's pretty ingenious. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and that bar that's on the machine won't hinder going around objects or anything like that. So uh, we don't have to screw it to the cutting deck or anything. So it literally, you know, push it up to the, the front part, clip the deal, and right on, you know, and whatever it is you need to do. So uh, that'll be real quick and easy. Everything's tied down safely. And I think that'll work pretty good. So, uh, anyways, I need to get out of here. Uh, let's see here. Let's get on down here. Uh, well, the walk and fix the sleeve. It will work out. But I saw how pissed you were, and I understood. Yeah, I know. Your military crew cut? Uh, yeah, I do the regular high and tight is what I do. <laughs> the sex the lady sizzling. Oh, they do? Okay, well, then that's the best MTD I've ever had. That uh, company is MG's highest brand, and at the time the company used to put out shafters and diesel right in the jet. They make Cub Cadet makes tractors too. You, well, they, I don't think they make them anymore, but you can find these old ones on Facebook or Craigslist all the time. Still in really good shape. Anyways, guys, I gotta get out of here. I appreciate you guys watching. Oh, um, we're gonna shoot live later on today, shooting uh, some mowing footage with old Cubby here, uh, the yellow bumblebee. So uh, if the walker ends up working out but we'll keep it we'll keep it but then it's like okay well then do we want to keep the the cup cadet i don't really need three mowers however if the walker was ever to go down i would not want to mow big properties with the 32 but we can get rid of the 32 and keep the the walker and the cup cadet because we got we'll have a 36 48 and 42 both bagging systems, so that would be great. So we wouldn't need the walk behind. We'd sell the walk behind for like two thousand dollars, and then use that money to buy the tractor. So we'd have the walker. Would the walker and the rider fit on there? It would, but I think uh, it would fit. But I think uh, I'd have to load the walker in and flip the deck up. I think that's the only way it would work. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Before we get rid of that walk behind, if that's what we do, then we'll think about that. So that means that all of our gates will have to be wide enough to fit the minimum the walker with a 36 inch deck. If we go with the taller tires, I think they're running those on the eight and a half and not seven and a half wide. That may be an issue there too. If that's the case, then all gates will have to be wide enough for the wheelbase of those new tires. So we'll see, we got a lot to think about, a lot to figure out before we get rid of a machine. But anyways, I know when it comes to Cup Cadet, they make their own engines. Well, that's pretty interesting, I didn't know that. All right guys, I'm getting out of here. I appreciate the lunchtime live with you folks. Work good, work hard, drink a lot of water, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.